I thought I'd do another video on um, other chemicals in our drinking water. That's a good question to ask because it depends on where you live. There are a lot of variables, but uh, in my mind, the answer is always going to be a yes, and I'll tell you why. If you think about the Flint, Michigan case, and I'll probably put a little reference to it in the description down below, they had lead in their water. Um, the other thing is it just depends on where you get your water from. Now, let's take, for instance, if you get your water from a lake or from a river, what happens is that water is drawn up into a water treatment plant, and they inject chlorine into it to kill all the bacteria. Isn't chlorine a chemical? Sure is. And then sometimes they'll put uh, fluoride in it, or they add ammonia with the, um, well, the ammonia, they use ammonia to make the chlorine and to treat it and then so you have what's called chloramines which are not good for you and they produce triamethylenes which is not good for you um, a lot of that causes cancer then they'll you know you've probably heard the deal they inject fluoride in it because it's great for the kids teeth well fluoride is a byproduct of metal production so um, as you can tell we have chemicals in our drinking water. That's just because we have to use chlorine to disinfect it. So what do you do for that? You get yourself a reverse osmosis system. Now, let's say, let's look at the big picture, how this all works out. I didn't realize at all most of my dealings in life were with a um, with well water. Because if you have well water, typically you don't have um, chemicals in your water. Sometimes you may, sometimes you may not, sometimes you know, sometimes I don't know until it's too late. I, for the most part, have lived on well water and even though I do, I still have a reverse osmosis system because you never know what's going to come up in your well. I don't chlorinate my water, it's straight out of the well, but I, the only thing I do is I take the iron out because I have six parts per million iron and I take out the calcium because I have 35 grains per gallon hard. I have really hard water. And then I take, I use a reverse osmosis just to make sure I don't have any sodium um, residual left in my water for my water softener. Because usually if you've got a one cubic foot water softener, you're going to have 17 milligrams of sodium residual in your water from the um, salt using, or using the salt to clean your media beads, which is equivalent to one piece of white bread. So. It's nothing substantial, and I'm not on a low-sodium diet, but I'm just um, a water guy, and so I always use reverse osmosis to drink my water in the, in the house. And I always drink bottled water when I'm not in the house, and I never drink public water. And the reason I don't drink public water is two reasons. One, like I said, the water is always treated with chlorine and or chloramine and or injected with fluoride. This is what I learned when I worked at a wastewater treatment plant. Water comes in to the plant, and guess what's in the water? Blood pressure medicine, birth control medication, any other medication that people are taking. One day I found a little baggie about this big, and inside that baggie were little balloons. And inside the little balloons was heroin. Um, yeah, I guess there was a raid in town and somebody flushed that all that money down the drain and it showed up in the water treatment plant and then uh, I threw it in the dumpster because all the solids that don't go through the plant end up in the dumpster. Well, let's say that stuff, oh, not to mention that one time I found a little baggie with some crack in it or it was crystal meth, I'm not sure, I just threw it in the dumpster. But let's say, aside from those things that I found, what about all the stuff that I don't find and is not found? So what happens is it goes to the wastewater treatment plant, you know, the, the water in the plant breaks down everything and then there's some oxygen in, injected in to keep the bugs working and doing what they do and this process is going and going and then finally the water goes through a chlorination process to make sure all the bacteria is killed. Every day back, that water is tested for bacteria and um, depending on uh, what the protocol is for that particular unit, but it's always injected full of chlorine. The chlorine is always tested every single day to make sure it's at the residual it needs to be to ensure that the water has no bacteria in it. And then it's um, 
dechlorinated and sent out into the river or to the lake, where whatever's closest to your water treatment facility. Now, think about this. All we did was kill the bacteria, right? And got rid of the solids. What about the high blood pressure medicine that's in the water? What about the birth control medication that's in the water? Goes out into the river or to the lake. The fish consume it or it goes down to the next city and then the next city pulls that water and what do they do? All they do is chlorinate it and send it into town for the people to drink. Do they take all, all the medication in it that from the birth control or blood pressure or all the other medications that folks are on nowadays? They sure don't. Now, is it diluted? Yes. But I read a, an article from, the, uh, from Harvard Medical that said in some places fish cannot reproduce and they believe it's because of the birth control medication that's coming out of the wastewater treatment plant into the stream and then the fish, naturally, they live in that water and guess what? They're not producing because they're on birth control medication. Simple. So anyways, do we have chemicals in, in our water? Yes, and that's because we chlorinate it to kill bacteria. Is there other stuff in our water? Absolutely. But I'm not here to, to you know, make you scared or afraid, but what I do recommend is don't drink public water. Always drink bottled water and get yourself a reverse osmosis system. Down below is a link to a reverse osmosis system. It's like a couple hundred dollars or less and uh, you can hire a plumber to put it in or you can do it yourself. It's not that difficult, it's pretty simple. And um, then you can know that the water you're drinking is safe because you wouldn't want to be poisoning your children or your pets um, with the water that you give them. Speaking of which, I know a lady that had cats and they had urinary tract infections. And I asked her, I said, um, are you feeding them water from the faucet? She said, yes. I said, try getting a reverse osmosis system and giving them RO water. Guess what? She got a reverse osmosis system. She gives her cats RO water. Guess what? No more urinary tract infections. I don't know. You tell me. And you can also go to your city and you can, you can Google um, water report for your city and it will tell you um, if there was any problems in the report with the tri trimethylines were too high, if there was other bacteria issues and whatnot in the report so you can see for yourself what's going on in your city's water to protect yourself. But like I said, just in case, get an RO because when they give you a boiled water report, it's probably too late. If you use an RO, it's never too late. Even if it's boiled water report coming in, you've been using RO water and that will kill all the bacteria that comes through that little faucet and through all those filters and membranes and you never have to worry about a boiled water report again. All right? So if this was helpful, please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, um, subscribe if you haven't already so when we do other videos you can be informed about reverse osmosis, water softeners, water filters, whatever we do. And then if you would do us a big favor down there where it says share, if you click on that share, you can highlight the little YouTube URL, put that on your Facebook page to get the word out about um, drinking water and how to make it safe. All right? Thank you and have a great day.